All right, let's hit this. We've got switch three added to our lab and you see the physical connections here and I have checked those, everything's ready to go. Switch two, still the route for VLAN 20 and 30, although we might be changing that a little bit here in this particular video. But let me ask you before we move forward, if switch two were to meet with an unfortunate accident, would switch one become the route for VLANs 20 and 30 or would switch three? And this should be really quick for you. You're probably looking at it now. You already got the answer before I finish the question. Now, the priorities are the same. I'm showing you the ones for VLAN 20 here. But the priorities here would be 32788. And for VLAN 30, it would be 32798 because the system ID extension value would be 30. And that's what we're adding. But since the priorities are the same, we know what it comes down to, the lowest MAC address. And we only have to go four figures, if you will, into the MAC address because on switch one, it begins with 0017. Switch threes begins with 001C. And as we know, with our knowledge of hex, seven is lower than C. So switch one should become the root for VLANs 20 and 30 in the absence of switch two. So you know what we need to do? We need to make switch two absent. That's exactly what we're gonna do right now. Let's go ahead and bring that up. And I'm gonna reload switch two and confirm by hitting enter and then quickly head over to switch one. And let's run show spanning VLAN 20. We just got a message about the line protocol going down, but already switched one has become the route for VLAN 20. It's just that fast. And if we put 30 here, then this bridge is the route. So that's where we are right now. Switch one is the route for both VLANs 20 and 30. And really that's about it. We could go over to switch three run both but it's going to see that switch one is the root as you see and we'll run 30 here as well and that's it so we've seen now exactly you know the theory holds switch one became the root we know exactly why because we know what we're doing but and not that a but uh, about knowing what we're doing maybe we don't want this to happen maybe we want switch three to become the root if switch two disappears rather than switch one becoming the root Hmm. Let's go over to switch two and first off, make sure it came up. Always a good idea. It really shouldn't take long, so I'm not even going to pause the vid. We can go ahead and watch this with some of those uh, post tests or the posts, I should say. I know that's like ATM machine, right? So we'll just go ahead and let this finish up. Take a little breather. Since you don't get to see this kind of thing very often, because hopefully you're not reloading your stuff at work a whole lot. So we got our cryptography warning and the switch version and press return to get started. Sounds good to me. Cover your eyes, although it won't be as bad as a router. <laughs> Seems like I get 92 screens with routers sometimes. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to reset the clock here because I'm not using NTP right now. So I'm going to go 080700. January 25th, 2017. So we're all set there with the clock. Now let's go ahead and run show spanning VLAN 20. And we see that this bridge has indeed become the root. You know, the ports are still in learning mode. We expect that, but this bridge has already won those elections or the one election. Let's go ahead and test 30 here and make absolutely sure. And we are good there. And again, this bridge is the root for VLAN 30. Uh, so. Our drill now, what our boss has asked us to do is to make sure that switch three becomes the primary route for VLAN 20 if switch two disappears, but we want switch one to continue to be the route for VLAN 30 and all other VLANs we might add in the future. Hmm. So one more time with that requirement, we've been told we need to make switch three become the primary route for VLAN 20 if switch two goes down, but we want switch one to continue to take the, that rollover for all other VLANs. Hmm. Well, let's go over to switch three and get to work because really it sounds a lot. Switch three, thank you very much. And let's take another look at that spanning VLAN command because we know we've got to put either primary or secondary here. There is no default. So we will go with secondary this time and diameter, we're going to leave that for future studies and go ahead with that command. 
So spanning VLAN 20 root secondary, what should I expect to see here when I run show spanning VLAN 20? Well, the local priority has changed, but that's about it. You're not going to see anything that says this is the secondary root. But what you are going to see is a priority that has now been lowered sufficiently so that this one, switch three in this case, does not become the root right away. But if the primary root disappears, switch three will take over. So we've noticed now that's down to 28,692. Let's go ahead and let those ports finish. There we go, forward and forward. And what about VLAN 30 though? What about any other VLAN? The priority there is going to be unchanged. And you note here next to bridge ID priority, we have 32,798. That's because we didn't change anything for VLAN 30, just for 20. So I think we need to make switch two disappear again. Let's do that thing. We will confirm with that and let it start going down a little bit. Reload reason, reload command. That's a good reason. Let's go on over to switch three. And run VLAN 30 and we see that nothing has happened there. Let's run show spanning VLAN 20. And you can see that this switch has already become the root. We didn't expect it to become the root of 30, but we do for 20. And you can see right here, again, this bridge is the root. And it's taken over because its priority was lowered before the primary for VLAN 20 actually went down. And we did that with the spanning VLAN root secondary command. Let's go up to switch one and check that out. Preferably in English this time. There we go. It's my first language. Show spanning VLAN 20. You can see that it recognizes that switch three is indeed the root for that VLAN. But if we look at show spanning VLAN 30, this bridge is the root. So we've met our requirement that switch three has indeed become the primary for VLAN 20 in the absence of switch two, but switch one is still gonna take over for VLAN 30 and all other VLANs we might add in the future. So whew, there's a lot going on there with the, with the uh, secondary and the primary, but really that's a great command to know. People overlook that secondary command and I'm very glad that we didn't do that. And we should be back up here in a second. Sorry about the scrolling there. And we're almost already back up because I want to reiterate that with the secondary command, uh, once the primary comes back online, the primary should take right back over. Uh, it's not like certain other features where you got to put the word preempt in there or something like that. So let's do a show spanning VLAN 20, see where we are. And you can see even though the ports themselves are still in learning mode, they're not quite in forwarding mode yet. This bridge is indeed the root again for VLAN 20. And because I'm the way I am, we're going to check 30 anyway, even though we know darn well this bridge is the root for VLAN 30. So a very handy way of setting up not only your primaries here, but your secondaries. And coming up next, we're going to look at another way to change the priorities here without using the spanning VLAN root command. That is coming up next.